Uh, Assistant Minister for Immigration and Border Protection, Alex Hawke. Uh, Mr Hawke, thanks very much for your time. A lot to talk about. I want to start with the, uh, the issue of, of same-sex marriage. Bill Shorten has responded on uh, via Twitter to Scott Morrison, who said that he's obsessed talking about this issue every day. He says, well, yes, I fight for what I believe in, was his response via Twitter this morning. Well, what does the Labor Party believe in, Kieran? I mean, we have put our position very clearly that we want a public vote. We want the people to decide this. Labor, frankly, have been all over the shop about this for the last decade. You've got to remember when Howard brought this in, the definition of marriage in the Marriage Act between a man and a woman, it was unanimously supported by the Labor Party. That was just a decade ago. So if they're fighting for something, it's very unclear what they're fighting for, except to avoid the public having a vote on this. Well, they want a free vote now, a, pl a plebiscite. Well, nothing... uh, sorry, a free vote as opposed to the plebiscite. Well, and the news poll suggests most people agree with them. Now. Well, the reason why we can't have that is because the Labor Party is not allowing a free vote. I mean, Senator De Bruin resigned uh, from the Senate saying that he couldn't be an opponent of marriage equality inside the Labor Party. The Labor Party's rules are saying that you are not allowed to hold the position that you are uh, in favour of marriages between a man and a woman. So there is no free vote in the Parliament. That, that's why the, the government put forward a position about a plebiscite where the people would make a decision because the Parliament over a decade has been unable to reach a resolution on this. And Labor haven't had a consistent position on this. People like Penny Warren a few years ago spoke against same-sex marriage. I mean, if you look at the history of this issue, the best way this is resolved is by the Australian people, and that's been the government's position. But that's not going to happen, though, is it? Do you accept that now, that that's... No, I don't that's agree not with that at all. It's not going to be a reality. It's unclear what Labor are doing. It's unclear why Labor are running from a public vote. Labor's position before the election was the public overwhelmingly support uh, marriage equality and what Bill Shorten says is his position. Now, if that is the case, well, why are they avoiding a public vote after the election? Why are they doing everything possible to avoid a public Cor vote? Corey Bernardi in uh, New York last night said that uh, when he spoke to Andrew Bolt that the, the coalition would do well to start adopting some of the, the policy prescriptions of One Nation. What do you say to that? Well, the government's not going to do that. We've got our own policy positions, and one of them in relation to migration is a very strong one. The Prime Minister in New York has spoken very clearly about our strong managed migration program. And what we've been able to do is the envy of the world. We've been able to manage our borders and control our humanitarian intake. And having a humanitarian intake of refugees is a broadly supported policy across the entire Australian community. What we want to do is make sure they've all passed health and character checks and security checks. And what the government is doing is making sure that all of those communities are the right kind of people that want to come well, to Senator Australia. Well, Senator Bernardi said on that issue that uh, there should be a rethink on the number of the Syrian refugees brought to Australia amid that conflict because of the, the cultural issues that he believes will be raised by having that number arrive here and to be, uh, to be settled here. What's your response to that? Well, I'm not sure what he's talking about. He would remember that in the Abbott government uh, this was announced, that we would take 12,000 refugees in response to the largest humanitarian crisis since World War II. Australia would do its bit. We've taken our time to be very thorough. This has well progressed, this policy. It's well accepted by the Australian community. And the government's announced many times that we will concentrate on taking um, the ethnic and religious minorities, the most persecuted groups in the conflict in, uh, in Iraq in particular. And I think that's the right policy. So we're being very methodical, making sure the security checks are done, the health and character checks are done, and that the people coming to Australia are genuinely the most... And, and you reject his uh, critique, his concern about the, the cultural ramifications of having uh, 12,000 on top of our other humanitarian intake from Syria? Well, absolutely. I'd invite him to come and have a look at some of these community groups that have been the most persecuted. I mean, if you could go visit the Assyrian community in Sydney or you visit the Mandaeans or the Yazidis, um, they don't necessarily have to be persecuted Christian groups, but I'm sure Corey would understand speaking to those groups. These are the most persecuted ethnic and religious minority groups in the region, and the government is keen to take some in our humanitarian intake. There are many persecuted Muslims as well. Absolutely, and some of this conflict is particularly between uh, Muslim groups, uh, Sunni and Shia, and some of the ISIS uh, 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 uprises about that conflict. So, do what, some of, do some of the, the, the individuals that we're taking into Australia, are, are they, they're, they're not just non-Muslims though, are they? Absolutely, yeah, there will be all groups, but as you can imagine, the government is focused on persecuted ethnic and religious minorities, and that's exactly as it should be. Women, children, all sorts of groups that are the most persecuted out of this conflict. And, you know, it's a good thing that we're doing. We're doing it properly and methodically. It's well advanced. Um, I think Corey understands that. He understands it was announced in the Abbott government, and it's well supported by the government. Let's uh, talk about the backpacker 
tax issue. The, the, uh, this was a, a concern raised by George Christensen and others. Do you think that the, the Prime Minister and Treasurer are finding a way through some of the, the sensitivities, particularly on the Conservative element of the Coalition Party? Well, it's not just the Conservative element. I'd stick up for my colleagues here. All of the Liberal regional uh, members, and there's more Liberal regional members than National regional members, and all of the National uh, members of Parliament across the country highlighted concerns about the rate of tax and, and what would be paid by backpackers and what that would do to the intake of uh, working holiday makers. So uh, the government obviously has to work closely with um, people within the government, regional communities, but also today you can't really announce a policy and expect it to uh, get through our current political environment in the form that it gets announced in. So what we've been able to do here is have a win for all sectors. You've got tourism, agriculture, everything's been thought about in this package uh, and there's many new initiatives in here, um, including uh, extending the same uh, employer, employer test uh, so that people can continue okay. to work. But even though the employer. tourism industry has kicked up a stink, but it, it just in a broader sense, is do you feel that the, the, the various uh, complaints and the aggravation within elements of your party room have, has settled down a bit in the wake of the closer than expected election result? Not, not just on this issue, but, but more broadly. Look, it's been very constructive, and people have come to the table with real practical ideas. Those ideas have been adopted in this package, and I'd say to the tourism sector, there are real benefits in the changes that have been made and announced by the Treasurer for tourism. Not just the $10 million for promotional stuff, but the visa changes that are coming, uh, and there are further changes coming in the visa system, in the Working Holiday Maker Program, where there'll be more flexibility, more people, are people allowed to seek second stays here if they work in regional areas, yep. if they work in tourism. So in November, for example, you'll see the government announce that in tourism, specifically, if a person on a work and holiday maker visa uh, wants to reapply, if they work in tourism or regional Australia or northern Australia, they'll be allowed to do, apply do, for One extension. of the things that aid, um, just one last question relates to the issue of uh, experts in the aid field say that we should be looking more at guest workers as well from the Pacific. Um, is that something that you're open to? in yeah. order Because obviously it would benefit the less well-off uh, nations in our region, but it also, you know, benefits our, our farmers and primary producers. Yeah, well, certainly there's two programs, and the Seasonal Workers Program um, has been limited to the Pacific, uh, certain Pacific countries. Uh, the, the uptake of that, that hasn't been as high as possible, and the government is considering uh, other options in other regional countries that could be considered for that program. But, I mean, look, there's great interest in the Working Holiday Maker Program. Even today, I'm signing a memorandum of understanding with Luxembourg. Uh, we will now have the ability for our Australians to travel there and work and holiday, and we'll have 100 uh, Luxembourg young people working and holidaying here as well. So okay. we've got 20 more of these agreements in the pipeline. So I don't accept that there is going to be a problem with people wanting to come here and have a working holiday. It's a great option. The settings that the government has put in place here are right, and you're hearing that from Agriculture, the okay. Hotels Association, and a lot of the industry sectors out there. Alex Hawke, we're out of time. Appreciate it. Uh, that's all for AIM Agenda. Sports